It really is a perfect picture of the rapid decline of this country. The scum of our society has fully indoctrinated our kids with rage. Rage at the patriarchy, at the oppressor, at the white man, at whatever. Rage at the free society that they all live in. Make no mistake, free Palestine is just the cause du jour. This moment is no different than George Floyd. It's the same people. It's the same rage. It is a cancer, and this cancer is here to stay. Take a look at some of the worst moments that we have seen as the radical left now pushes genocide. We are Hamas! You're Hamas, wow. You can walk through us. We're here. Don't get in my way. <laughs> you notice many of them are masked up because their parents all have probably really important jobs to pay for their education. They can't risk being exposed for who they actually are. And the reason this is happening is very simple. For far too long, the Democrat Party has shilled for the radical left's escalation toward chaos. What we're seeing right now is what happens when the West embraces self-hatred, which anoints a victim class able to shame the rest of us, anoints them above all of us. America is now deeply divided between victim and oppressor, and our kids are furiously attempting to shed their oppressor label, which is no longer fashionable, and identify with the victims, very fashionable. It is ingrained so deep, it's protested by people who have no understanding of the reality at all, as evidenced in this interview from NYU's campus this week. The goal is just showing our support for Palestine and demanding that NYU stop. I honestly don't know okay. all of what NYU's doing. Is there something that NYU's doing? I really don't oh. know. I'm pretty sure they're... Do you know what NYU is doing? About what? About Israel. Why are we protesting here? Yeah. I wish I was more educated. I'm not either. If an Arab in a kafia walked up to her and demanded she lay down in traffic to repent her sins as a white oppressor, she'd probably do it. This is what we've created. Millions of self-hating under 25 Western babies buying Starbucks with iPhone apps while hating capitalism, attending violent Marxist rallies before going bar hopping, casually helping to advance the genocide of an entire race of people, too stupid to understand the complexities of a war involving a terror group that pushes its own people in front of bombs and bullets. And this twisted ideology now not only breeds on our elite campuses, it defines our elite campuses. You're safer calling for the destruction of Israel at Harvard or Columbia today than you are calling a trans woman a man. Today, Hamas, a terror organization that raped, murdered, and mutilated innocent women on October 7th, animals who put babies inside of ovens, praised the anti-Israel protesters here in the United States, Hamas calling these kids the future leaders of this country. It's probably not a bad prediction. Some of these people are current leaders of this country, as we see every day. We now have white kids going to Ivy League schools, aligning with terror groups that would gladly take them as hostage and behead them. The train has completely left the station, and free speech, once banished on these dystopian campuses, has now returned only for those who align with the ideals of a terror group, which has claimed the most valuable thing of all, victimhood. Yes, Hamas, Iran, they're oppressed. All of this explained perfectly by a very based NYU professor. If I went into the NYU square with a white hood on and said, lynch the blacks or burn the gays, my ID would be shut off by that night. Uh, and I would never work in academia again. There would be no need for the words context or nuance. I wouldn't be protected by terms like First Amendment or free speech. Exactly right. 